um, first of all, I can't believe how many times I've been lucky enough to speak to you this week, Bryce. It is fantastic. Um, it's going to be so funny when we meet face to face, isn't it, girls? <laughs> You know, we spend so much time together as a community, both on and off camera. And we, Bryce and I, for our coffee chat today, we wanted to invite the amazing Chantel from Acarious Rising Africa, but also from your new channels, uh, your new channel, which is Solutions with Chantel. Yeah. How do I pronounce your surname? It's Mayberg, but what we've actually done, we've just made it Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa. Just oh, to- okay standardize it absolutely it just felt a lot better because it's not just me part of the solutions it's Mornay and we've got a whole team behind us as well Thea, Viviana as well as Doro so we're all involved so we're all part of the Aquarius Rising Africa team so yeah we just come up with solutions and of course you are both on that channel as well. So everyone has solutions. <laughs> Can I say something? This might sound totally vain, but I, the first thumbnail you guys put up with your whole team, I shared it on my Twitter. It was like a Vogue photo shoot. Everybody on your team is so freaking good looking. I was like, what is this? Everybody was just striking a pose. And I was like, they're so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Oh, they totally are inside you and too. out. I mean, I can put you too, because you were all up there looking all sassy. And <laughs> I was like, you "Well, it's good that friend. you know we have You're Mona gorgeous. that makes us. Yeah, Mona <laughs> makes us look good. You know. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's such a talent. And I mean, <laughs> it's really lovely to see the direction everyone's moving. And the way, reason that Bryce and I really wanted to invite Chantelle on today is we introduced in our last coffee chat our sort of meditation challenge or or offer of people because we find it is something that Bryce and I are very much incorporate into our daily routines and it's been life changing for us, hasn't it, Bryce? Yeah. yeah. Um, but we what we realized is it raises, it can raise a lot of resistance, fear, misunderstanding in people in terms of what it is. And since we did that last week, I've been asking a lot of people and sort of so many people, when I say, what does meditation do? They're like sitting cross-legged, chanting in a weird outfit sort of thing. Um, <laughs> so we wanted to get you on, Chantel, to sort of really discuss around the topic a bit so that we can really make it more accessible to absolutely anyone, which it is, and really help people understand the why, why that's, this might be something, if you're not already doing it, that could be really great for you to introduce into your life. You know, I always say, Catherine, well, firstly, thank you for inviting me on with you two sassy girls, because I just love being here. It's so good to speak to, you know, connect with like-minded people from across the world. And it's just so beautiful to know that one day we're going to meet in person mm. and just give each other such big hugs and all the meditation we'll be paying off then. <laughs> 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 well, I always say prayer is dialogue with God and meditation is listening to God. So it's like a telephone conversation, if we think about it like that. Um, Only one person can speak at a time unless uh, otherwise things kind of get muddled up, right? So my prayer would be to, let's say, and I will say, you know, the way I pray is, is very specific. I'm not, please, 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 you know, this, this, and I need, and that, 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 that. Because I believe that, um, you know, whatever we're feeling, whatever whatever we're thinking, whatever we're projecting out of there is really, it's it's, uh, 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 expanding on that, creating that. So the more we want and need you put out there, the more want and need you're going to attract. So I like to pray and I'm grateful. My prayer in the morning and a hundred million times during the day is thank you so much for this. Wow. Look, I mean, as I'm sitting here, I'm watching at least 50 doves on my lawn um, that I've, and there's a full bunch of Guinea fowl there as well. And I'm so grateful that they choose my house to come and eat because it's so cute. My cat has a field time trying to stalk them, um, but doesn't really get very far because they've kind of gotten used to them, you know. But my point is to pray, to pray with gratitude, to say thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this amazing um, bed I sleep in. Thank you for my beautiful child. I'm so grateful for my granddaughter. Thank you. That's how I pray. 
if there is something I'm uncertain about, I would say, God, you know me, I'm a little bit of a dummy when it comes to this. So I really need clarity on whatever it is. So please offer me clarity and let me have no doubt that it comes from you. So then I would then go into meditation. Now, meditation really is being quiet. It's learning how to find that off switch in the mind. Now, most people will say they have no idea how to find that off switch or how to quiet their mind. Well, like anything, it's going to take practice and it's going to take time. So I use the breath. The breath is such a powerful tool. Again, if we just look at what this whole spiky flu nonsense has brought us, it's affected our lungs most importantly, right? Or most prominently. So that is telling me that we're not breathing enough. So we need to start breathing. And in yoga, we learn the art of breathing. Mm. So I would then just close my eyes, focus on my breath. And I always say, count your breaths. So as you just sit, you breathe and you just count your breaths because that keeps you focused on what is here instead of going all out there because meditation is about really coming into your inner self and into your inner being and aligning with your inner being. So count your breaths. And of course, you're gonna, your, mind, you, you, your mind is going to run away a million times. The, the whole objective is, is not to get frustrated with yourself and not to give up there and not to get uh, say, well, I can't do it and it doesn't work for me or whatever the case might be. So then when you catch your mind running off, just come back and start again. And maybe just now you were able to count to three before your my, my mind raced off. Now you can count to seven or six before your mind raced off. Hey, that's progress. So if that's what you do, you know, for me, I have sat in Vipassana um, as well, which is a 10-day silent retreat and the original meditation that the Buddha taught and stuff like that. That's tough going, okay? So I'm saying you don't have to do anything as extreme as that when you start. Literally give yourself 10 minutes and you can set your timer if you need to where you sit in a comfortable position, I would recommend you sit rather than lay down, or you can lay down. I mean, after yoga and after when you, after yoga practice in Shavasana, it's lovely to lay down there and just for 10 minutes, just breathe. But oftentimes we fall asleep and that is wonderful as well. But I would encourage us to maybe focus on just being aligned and learning how to quiet the mind. So, if that is what you do for the first 10 minutes, that is amazing. And if you're just practicing for the first week or the first month, just bringing yourself into alignment and just not being frustrated with yourself, not getting impatient with yourself, etc., you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days like anything else, right? So I would then just say, just to sit and you'll see one day, just like that, there's that moment or 10 or two or five of complete silence. And in that moment of silence, it's like everything just magnifies. You feel that complete peace and alignment within yourself. You feel that connection to God and your answer is right there. So that's when, you see, when we are quiet in our being, that's when we hear the voice of God. Because God does not shout to us from a booming loudspeaker in the sky as much as what I'd love to have that happen because it would probably simpl simplify a lot of things. God speaks to us in our quiet times. God speaks to us when the mind is still and we're on absolute alignment. And that's when, let's say, you have that question um, about something. For me, when my animals have been in trouble and I've needed to, like as an animal communicator, I can tell you I'm very good with other people's animals, but when it comes to my animals, I'm terrible, especially when I know they're in trouble because then I'm all over the place. I'll usually get other, other animal communicators to work with my animals, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but then I would, let's say, ask a question and just be silent and immediately... I would get a picture 
an understanding of if they're okay or if they've crossed over. So I would know. Whether it's a good or a, or, or a pleasant answer doesn't matter. It's the truth. And the truth, as Jesus says, shall set you free. So in that moment, you just know the truth. Every cell in your body goes ping, ping, ping. And it's that resonance within you. So it takes practice to get there. But when you start doing it, it is such a beautiful thing. And, you know, there's no such thing as a bad meditation. There are going to be mornings that you, for example, or evenings or afternoons, whatever. I always recommend the morning because it's a beautiful start to your day. Um, and just to sit, and even if you're just breathing, even if your mind is chaotic today, just decide to breathe for 10 minutes, just to breathe, just to breathe, just to breathe. And sooner than soon, you'll get there. And, you know, then you can go into the more, I would call it fancy meditation type things. But really it's learning how to just still yourself, move into alignment with our creator and find the answers and the solutions that your soul is trying so hard to bring to you. But when we are all over the place and when our mind is scattered, like we call it the monkey mind, all over the place, we don't hear the voice of the heart. We don't hear the voice of God because God lives in our heart. So, you know, when, when we are in tune with the heart, that's when we get the answers. And that's when things become a lot easier because when you meditate, you don't make mistakes. That's the thing. You learn how to trust yourself. You learn how to trust your inner being. You learn how to trust what is true to you. And you go with that. And no one can argue with your truth. That's what I've discovered. So that might help. I hope that helps. <laughs> well, I love you. You know, the, the second sutra of the first pada is Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha, which uh, the Chitta, the Vrittis are, the Chitta is the brain and the Vrittis are like dropping a pebble in the water and the waves that come out. So they're the thoughts that come out of your brain. And we talk about attraction and it comes into your body. You know, the, the body becomes the mind field and the Rhoda has nothingness, bringing that to nothingness. So it's not affecting you. And I love how, because I think a lot, I think what intimidates people is that we don't, you know, we're taught in our lives to like honor our mind and our intelligence. But when you start looking at meditation and yoga, it's kind of the opposite. It's like, well, actually that mind, those thoughts are what's getting you in trouble. You know, don't believe yeah. everything you think. Um, and half of these thought patterns we have, we're not even aware we're repeating them on this cycle constantly that's filling up our whole energy cycle and then thus, thus shifting our reality. And I love that you're telling people to focus on the breath. I think a lot of people, when they think of meditation, especially if they've never had a teacher or if they never really studied it, they think you just have to sit there and just be silent. Mm. But if you give your brain, because the brain's not going to let you do that. The brain, there's an incredible book called Flow. I, I, the, the guy who wrote it, his last name is like 10 letters long. It's Hungarian. I'm not even going to embar embarrass myself trying to say his last name, but you can look it up. He studied the human brain for like 25 years. And he talked, and one thing that really affected me reading this book was that the brain, the muscle of the brain, it's one job is to keep us alive. And so that means it's constantly taking in information for your survival. So what he found in his study was that people, we always get excited about the weekends, but actually people were recorded as being more depressed on the weekends mm. than they were during the week. And it's because the brain had free time to wonder. And the brain's job is to figure out problems to keep you alive. So what does it then do? It goes back into the filing cabinet and pulls up an issue that you don't have closure on. And therefore you start to relive that issue. Yeah. Whereas when the brain has something to focus on. It's not going to do that. So when you can sit for five, 10 minutes and just give your brain homework by watching the breath, you can then achieve that sense of silence because you're not allowing that, that organ to go to be monkey mind. We say that all the time in yoga, the monkey mind, the monkey mind, you know, to kind of go this way and that way and this way and that way. And, and I love how you said that because even if you get to the to, to, to three breaths and all of a sudden you start thinking about the laundry, I do that a lot. I'm OCD with cleanliness. So I constantly am like, oh my God, I need to do laundry. Like I'm constantly, okay, acknowledge that. My anxiety came up. Now let's go back to watching that breath and counting that breath. So I love that you gave that tip because in all different forms of meditation, that's the key 
is getting that brain, that mind to come to that one pointed focus. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think also for anyone watching this, um, you know, if, if you don't resonate by saying connect with God, it can be your higher self, it could be nature, it could be universe, whatever resonates with you. I've heard a lot of people talking about meditation actually being know yourself. And a lot of the time, us humans, we keep ourselves very busy to not address the real issues. Absolutely. And that, you know, you might think that's working, but that's like you having a problem with your car and the red light flashing on the dashboard and you're just taking the, boy, but the bulb out. You know, the issue's still there. And these lovely small bite-sized steps, like you were um, saying, Chantelle, is really, really important because you don't have to sit there for an hour each time. If, you, if you've got a newborn baby, fit it in if your baby's asleep. Um, you can also, also do it if you're, I mean, I will quite often really go into that state and concentrate on my breath, say, when I'm walking the horses or something like that. So you can experiment. So there's always somewhere you can start yeah. And once Absolutely. you start and it's like, you know, if you're going on a new fitness thing or trying to change something about your diet, there can be some resistance or it can be hard initially. But once you've started to get over that hump, the benefits come flooding in so quickly is my experience. Absolutely. It's so true that because <clears throat> it's all about intention and it's all about decision. We make, you know, we set an intention to, let's say, um, live a more enriched life. And by that, we certainly don't mean how much money we have in the bank, because we've understood that that is, for many people, not richness at all. But for me, it's about the richness of my spirit. How do I feel in the morning when I wake up? How do I feel about what I'm doing? How do I focus my energy? You know, um, how do I treat people during the day? And I don't always get it right. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm the first one to maintain I'm impatient. So when I feel like I'm being impatient, I go and I'll sit back and I'll just sit with myself for five minutes. And I'll go, <clears throat> I'll go, okay, just calm down. It's fine. You don't need to have all this done at the same time. Just relax. But it takes me breathing to get there. You know, so I, the more I do that, the more patient I become and the more I learn about myself, which is amazing because that truly is what it is. You know, at the end of the day, what I believe in this life, we are here to expand our own consciousness as humans. And we all know that we have a soul. We possess a soul. Okay. Which is. I always say God is the sun and we are the rays. And each one of us is a ray of God's light. So that ray would be your soul. We all have that. Whether you are a, an ant, anything that lives, an elephant, uh, a human, whatever, everything that lives has a soul. So for me, it's about connecting with that aspect of myself and how do I enjoy being that in my human form? And I can't have a fantastic human experience if I'm constantly in pain, constantly fighting with people, constantly um, running around and never having time for anything and, and being submissive to someone else's needs. I can't think of anything more horrible, actually. So me, by the age of 24, I was fired from every job I had for insubordination. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided I better work for myself, otherwise my son and I were going to starve. So I'm happy that happened because it taught me my own inner strengths. So through being silent and getting to know who I am, and I learned meditation and prayer were the two key elements that I needed to do. So I've also started like, and I mean, anyone who, who does my workshops and my mentorship programs with me knows we start our morning with what we call the power hour or your morning hour. And that doesn't just entail meditation. That would be the first thing you do, but it also entails going out and honoring the earth, honoring God for creating this beautiful earth on which you stand the trees that create the oxygen for us to breathe, the sun that shines and brings light to this day, my 10 flexible fingers, my eyes that see, my hands, my arms that hug and hold. 
You see, we forget all these little things that we so take for granted. And we just tend to wake up and go into the stress mode, which then immediately puts out the shattered vibration. And we understand that law of attraction says, whatever you're putting out, you're going to be attracting. That is just the way that it is. So if we wake up and we decide that today is going to be a brilliant day, and today something fantastic is going to happen, and we live with that expectation, you better believe that something wonderful is going to happen. That is just the way it is. But we get to that place through connecting, in my case, prayer and meditation. Journaling is something very important. Appreciating this beautiful body in which you live. This body is the expression of your soul in physical form. So anyone who thinks that this body is just a meat suit, well, that's what you're going to get then. I like my meat suit. My meat suit has got so much potential. And on this third dimensional planet, we, are, we can't be little puffs of spirit, right? Because we're not going to be seen or heard or get to express ourselves and grow. This is such a beautiful opportunity for growth and expansion in this world. So the first thing to do is appreciate the body because we know when the body is in pain or the mind is at dis hyphen ease, you know, and I always say dis hyphen ease, dis ease is when your body is not at ease. So why is it not at ease? You're the one that has created that dis hyphen ease in the body, whether it's a mental, spiritual or emotional or a physical thing. So it is up to us to decide my body wants to be at ease to have the best possible result for myself. Mm -hmm. So when we align with that, and when we understand these, in my opinion, core truths, there's nothing that can stop us from living a beautiful life. It doesn't mean that every day is a la, 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 la day. We have challenges. And absolutely, you know, the more we expand our consciousness, the more challenges we encounter. But I love encountering those challenges because it helps me to expand my consciousness even more. You know, I'm then challenged to raise my frequency. And if I'm not raising my frequency, I'm going to constantly be at odds with the world and the lower, the lower dimensional frequencies, so to speak. So I like to challenge them because that shows me where I need to raise myself. And when I encounter that through meditation, I raise my frequency. Through connecting with nature, I raise my frequency. Through taking a dip in the ocean in the morning, I raise my frequency because I go there with intent. I go there with an idea of, yes, I'm so looking forward to just that buzzing feeling in my cells. And just so grateful that I get to live at this beautiful ocean at this amazing time. So, you know, I do believe it's very important to be quiet as well. We have to learn to be quiet and silent and sit still. So that for me is what the meditation is about. I, you know, every, every time I walk in the ocean or in the forest or whatever, that for me is a meditation, but it's a different type of meditation. Yeah. So let's go on to that a bit then, because that's quite important, isn't it? Because a lot of people, yeah, that's another opening for some people if they've yeah. got resistance, is to be present when they are doing things like that. Absolutely. To be present is the greatest gift you can give yourself. And what does it mean to be present? It really means to be aware of what you're feeling, aware of what you're thinking, aware of what your actions usually are. You know, that for me is about the intimacy you have with yourself. So, so many of us desire intimacy, let's say with a partner. And I'm not talking about sexual intimacy necessarily. I'm talking about emotional intimacy. Yet why do so few of us have that? That is one of the biggest issues you hear about people in relationships. Well, it's simply because we've not given us that intimacy with ourselves. So sitting quietly with yourself and feeling what you're feeling and acknowledging what you're feeling, no matter how crappy it might be in that moment, you are your own best friend. 
you need to be your own best friend. And those are the moments where you then become intimate with yourself, your pain, your sadness, the obstacles that stop you from moving forward. And that's where the journaling comes in. Because now that you've understood it, it's floating around in your head. So now, right, 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 right. Because that creates the pathways that release that out of the brain and the mind. And then that gives you an understanding of what's going on in your head. It's a clearing almost. So, you know, there's not just one thing that I do. There's a couple of things, but they all link. And when we do these things, I just find life becomes a much more joyful and pleasant experience. You know, the times in my life where I've actually consistently journaled too, um, and, it, and it could just, even when I was like in high school where it was literally like, dear diary, there's a really cute boy in my chemistry class. Like even those types of writings, those were always the calmer parts of my life. Cause it literally is a time to reflect on who you are with yourself, with no one else, but yourself. Um, and so I'm glad you brought that up too. Yeah. yeah. I would really encourage people to sort of really just, just stop because I think everyone, you know, there's, I don't think there's anyone I've ever met that sort of said, there's no room for improvement in my life. You know, we can always, always make things better. And I was speaking to Charlie Ward this morning and I was just saying, you know, when you look around our community of the people that were speaking together, I've actually never been in such a friendship group of such happy, living life to the full group of people and someone put a com comment under one of my videos um, recently, and it was like, um, isn't it funny how all the truthers are promoting the same products? I was like, yeah, yeah, but it's not an accident. You know, it's not an accident that the people that are living this sort of lifestyle and really feel so on purpose are looking after themselves physically, emotionally, spiritually, and are sharing those things, you know, that, success leaves clues and don't get me wrong i'm not being big headed and saying oh wow aren't we successful because we're doing this but i honestly have not encountered such a happy well-adjusted group of people in terms of look at the discussion we had last night um bryce with Dr. bryce and i spoke to dr christian northrop i mean if you'd have told me two years ago i'd be speaking to dr christian northrop i'd have thought you were joking because i definitely had her up on a pedal stool but she said something really poignant. She said, you know, when we're all having these conversations, there's no bit of us that we need to hide. Exactly. And what a exactly. lovely place of peace to got to where when you're friends, you can really feel that you can be truly yourself. Isn't that about being vulnerable? Mm. Because I always say vulnerability is true strength. Because when you're being vulnerable, you see, but the, again, it always begins with yourself. And it starts that intimacy and understanding who you are, what your strengths and your, your, your weaknesses are, so to speak. You can then be vulnerable with your friends about it and in groups like this. And that is really being so honest. And honesty is the highest form of love. Mm. So when you're being vulnerable, you're being true to yourself. And you are therefore giving yourself the greatest love. And when you give yourself the greatest love, you are then capable of giving that to another. You cannot give it to another unless you've given it to yourself. Mm -hmm. That is what unconditional love is. You know, it just means that you accept people and understand that I have limitations and, and, and incompletions as well. So does another. So when I've accepted my limitations, you know, uh, of course I can understand that someone else has their limitations too. And then we stop judging and then we stop being mean to each other and you this and you that and you should have, and why didn't you, da, 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 you know, we then understand, okay, well, we've all got our issues. So they all just come packaged differently. And it's actually fun to sit around talking about my issues because that's wonderful. You see, that's about knowing thyself. And I believe that's when Jesus said, know thyself. So it's knowing yourself. I know myself very well. doesn't mean I'm perfect. doesn't mean I'm fault-free at all. In fact, I'm the last. <laughs> I'm the most imperfect version of perfection that there is. <laughs> or the most perfect version of imperfection, whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call it. I'm, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with knowing 
beneath it all, I'm a good person. And I like to encourage others. I like to help others where I can. It doesn't mean I don't have a bad day and I can't be a bitch from time to time because I can. Rest assured, I can. And I, I can be grumpy and I can be short, irritable. But I like to think that I'm 80% not that, and 20% of me is that. So I can work on that. But it doesn't mean that we are perfect and that we're all here. What is perfect anyway? What is perfection? The greatest masters have understood perfection does not always feel good. So perfection means that you really get to know yourself. You get to understand yourself. You appreciate these things about yourself. And only then do you appreciate them about others as well. So when others, when someone else is having a bad day, you can not beat them up for it. Mm. That's the way I see it. So interesting. I was just listening this morning while I was getting dressed and ready. I was listening to someone talk, kind of talk about this. Um, and she was describing something about vulnerability because vulnerability is first got to be vulnerable with yourself. And again, admit where, where you have weaknesses and that's being vulnerable with yourself. But when you're able to create this softness around your heart for yourself, it exudes to others. And she said something interesting. I'm paraphrasing what this speaker was saying. It's like when you have like, if you like, like Play-Doh, like what kids play with Play-Doh mm -hmm. play, it can take a beating and take a hit. But if you take something hard, it can't take a beating, it shatters. And so the softer you can make yourself in your heart space, the more you can take in, the more, the more you can take in for yourself, the more you can observe the higher vibration. But when you harden yourself and don't work, work on that, when things come barreling at you, it breaks you, you know, and, and that's that, that's that vulnerability. I love that you were talking about that because I think that definitely is like that vulnerability with yourself first admitting so many people have a, our friend Liz was talking about this. I thought this was so interesting. She said this, like at one point she didn't want to say anything because she couldn't handle being wrong. But when you bring yourself to a place of vulnerability, it's fine. And then you can grow and expand. And I think meditation is the key to that because you have to. I mean, I tell my students when they first sign up to take our courses or my courses specifically, I'm like, if you're here for like light and love, that's not going to happen for a long time. The first part of this journey is sitting in your shit. And it's going to be really uncomfortable. I and don't just, smell that good. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you, so when I was doing my little survey this week, because um, I've been speaking to lots of different people from, you know, some really experienced meditators, some who are like, there's no way I could do that sort of thing. So let's talk about someone, perhaps a beginner who, who had thought, you know, meditation was something else. And the biggest thing I had is that people thought it had to be emptying their minds completely. No. And, and no. that's an unrealistic goal, as we've already said. And um, it might be a bit worrying if we did as well, because as a species, we probably wouldn't survive very long. But give us your top three tips, both of you, actually, about just getting started and why, how they can try and start working out their why for themselves. Well, I would say the first thing I would do, if you have the opportunity to sit in nature, uh, where, where it needs to be as, when I say quiet as possible, try not to have street noises, hooters, all of that going on. So if you have the opportunity of, let's say, being at the ocean or in a forest or something, hearing nature sounds, that would be first prize. If you can't have that, then sit in a room, where it is just you, you can close the door for 10 minutes and you literally decide to close your eyes, sit up straight. What I, I don't like, I mean, a lot of people think guided meditations, maybe that is a good place for someone to start as well as to listen to some guided meditations. That could be a good place. I think just go more for the breath. Mm. Then if you feel like listening to a sound, like for, for example, me, the sound of the ocean is a great way just to align my mind with that. You know, that constant it's so some people might like that. Others might like the sound of the birds. Mm. So find something. Maybe if you just have music playing in the background with no words or anything, just some nice Chill, chilled out music. So I would say find a comfortable space, whatever that might be for you. Close your eyes 
decide, and then start counting your breaths and just breathing. And thirdly, and as I was oh, sorry, still on that point, whenever your mind runs off and it will, do not get impatient with yourself. Lovingly bring yourself back and start again. Count your breaths. And thirdly, um, enjoy it. Mm. Just have fun with this. It's not supposed to be this hectic, serious thing as so many people tend to think it is. It's something that you are bringing up joy. You're bringing up wonderful what is success? Success is feeling good in today. Success is not necessarily hitting a million dollar deal. Okay. It could be deciding to stretch and instead of touching your knees today, you can go a centimeter below your knee. That is success. You know what I'm saying? So whatever success is for you to feel that wonderful feeling of, of expansion, improving, moving forward whatever that is for you. So that is what I would say. Have fun with it. Mm. It's a beautiful creative process. It's where you reaching God, your creator. It's a very, very, very personal space that you have with your creator, your source, God, whatever you choose to call it. And um, have fun. Brilliant. Anything else from you, Bryce? Well, I would say too, to add to that, like no one's going to be grading you on this. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. That's again, letting your mind. So I would say for beginners, start with five, 10 minutes. You know, mm. if you were training for a marathon, you wouldn't just go out and run 26 miles. No, you would start with one mile and then two miles. Well, the meditation is going to be, it's, it's going to be like that as well. Start with five, 10 minutes. That's all five minutes. Every, anybody can sit for five minutes. You know, start, just, just make that. Okay. This week, well, today's Thursday. Well, starting Thursday to Thursday, I'm going to sit for five minutes. That's it. Um, you know, you, the breath is a way to focus the mind. There's also an idea of, you know, some people do like Japa meditation where there's a mantra and you can get a fancy mantra from a teacher, like Om Ganapatiye Nama or Om Namah Shivaya or any of these fancy mantras, but you don't need to, you can just create your own mantra. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. Or I am, I am a hung, a hung, I am, I am. Um, Ram, 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 Ram. That's the vibration of God. You know, anything you can, you know, that that just for just as you're watching your breath, repeating that mantra, that will help you also get to that point of releasing. And at some point, I know with a lot of people who do uh, either Japa meditation or transcendental meditation, where they are heavily focused on mantra work, eventually the mantra leaves. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you you're not doing it anymore, and you're just watching your breath. It just fades away. And so, but for five minutes, you are worthy of sitting for five minutes and starting that journey to figure out how magical you truly are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would say for anyone, because I get a lot and I, you know, we've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. You know, if you've got young children, um, it's a great thing to get into the habit with young children about as well. And again, if it doesn't matter if it's not perfect straight away, but the biggest thing, I would say is make that commitment to yourself, whether you're making diet changes, whether you're trying to get fit. I mean, my neighbor and I last year, we've got a thing in the UK, which is for people that don't run. I love exercise. I love riding. I love walking, but I do not love running. I just don't. And then I thought, you know what? Everyone I know can run at least 5K. So my neighbor and I, they've got this thing called couch to 5K. None of us were couch potatoes anyway, but we weren't into running. But it's hysterical little steps just to build up to run 5K. Now, most people think that's ridiculous. They think, why can't you run 5K? But I had a mental work. And it's so gentle on you. Like the first day, you like run for 30 seconds, walk for 30 seconds. It's really gentle. And and I did it. I did, I, I, you know, and I'm not a runner. I don't enjoy it. But I felt so pleased with myself. But you have to do the commitment. So find some way of holding yourself accountable because we all promise you it will be so, so worth it. But you, it's called a practice of meditation for a reason, as you said, Shanti, at the start. You know, you can't. I couldn't go out and run 5K even though I can walk all day. Um, but 
when you start and allow yourself to start small and have fun with it. And we did have a giggle because we were even choosing the flattest bits to do our running sections on. So we had a right laugh doing it. And that's what I would say, decide why you want to do it and then hold yourself accountable. Yeah. Do it because these habits can take time to go. But once you've got into a habit of doing, I promise you, you won't want to stop. Absolutely. It really, that is so true. And I love what you say because I hate running. I always have not enjoyed running. It takes me back to school days mm. when uh, we were playing sport and we were forced to run up these horrid, oh, no, please. Yeah. And my boobs were sore. I was like, yeah. no, no, no. So I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of walking. I do a lot of hiking, that sort of stuff for me. But you're right. It might just be good just, just to see, you know, what it's like. Just that, as you say, couch to 5Ks, which is a wonderful thing, where you actually, you're breaking perceptions. And who knows? Maybe I'll do that on the beach, you know, yeah. decide to just run on the beach because I've got a nice flat surface beach. I don't need to be going up any hills and what have you. So it's, you know, I think that's a wonderful idea to actually do that and just walk for 30 seconds, run for 30 seconds, walk for 30 seconds, run for 30 seconds for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. Achievement is something that you're breaking through some mind barriers. It it's is. Always it's about breaking mind barrier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, and running is actually a form of meditation. It um, is. There are people that uh, long, I know a lot of people who they, they, it's not the extra, it's they get to that runner's high. And I used to be a runner a long time ago. And I would get that where you, you kind of, your body starts to almost not go numb, but you're just not, your mind kind of clears and you're, you're breathing, especially if you're not listening to music, if you're just running and everything. And that's why a lot of people are runners is because it's really not about the actual exercise, mm -hmm. the cardiovascular. I mean, that's a benefit, but it's that mental clarity that they need. They crave that, that time to like clear their mind swimmers i know swimming is the same way for people who will swim laps and laps and laps and laps and they're under that water and of course everything you can't really hear much under the water and they're able to kind of go into their own little cocoon while they're moving and their mind is focused on moving the arms moving the arms moving the arms and they go into that meditative state so that is another form of meditation there's just so and I, and two i was thinking as well you know when you, whenever you start a journey into something and i think this is true for anything where you start is often not where you end and mm. so just for starting for five minutes, it's going to evolve over time and it's going to change. When you start to have a better understanding of who you are, things are just going to naturally change. So the meditation you start with might not be the meditation you're doing a year from now and things will fall in line for you. So be open that where you're starting now is literally just that five minutes just to kind of get yourself calibrated to then move where you need to move with, with this journey. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and you say that, that that's so true what you're saying there, Bryce. It, you know, <clears throat> wherever you're starting and have no expectation of what you think it has to be like or is going to be like. Start with an open mind and just do it because it's fun and because you're breaking your, your, your mind barrier. And when you break that mind barrier, anything can happen. The universe is so beautiful in terms of just throwing us cute little curveballs and, you know, great little gifts here and there. It's just wonderful. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend that for sure. Just to start. That's a great, another great T-shirt. The universe threw me a cute little curveball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, so many to think. I think we should actually all have t-shirts made like that. Yeah, <laughs> make you a little curveball. <laughs> oh, can I be furry, my fur, my curveball? I can just see it now, little furry curveball. <laughs> um, thank you so much, folks. Anyway, let us know in the comments below. We'll be having more of these chats. Um, let us know. But you know, as you said, there's no right and wrong. No one's going to be grading you on this um have fun with it try it and and it's quite fun to see how those around you whether they're two-legged or four-legged start to notice you changing because they will Absolutely. so and then they want to then they'll generally want to start joining you you know i always say it's 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 how do we change the world it's not about telling people you're not preaching from a pulpit you're actually engaging so people learn through example if you're a good example you know, others will follow suit. So when you 
open your heart and you become as I love what you say, Bryce, that gentle, lovely, pliable, lovable version to yourself and therefore to those around you. That's how we change the world is just by being that. So it's starting with, with yourself in a lovely, loving way. Absolutely. Have fun, everyone. And um, if you want a curveball T-shirt, email Liz. We'll put her link below, and I'm sure she'll do a one. A cute curveball, a cute curveball. <laughs> well, definitely. We've got a few new ones we've come up with, haven't we? So I can't wait till I'm sitting there in a the T-shirt like you two. It's sunny today, but it's such a cold wind. So it's like... Oh, but ha yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, folks. Have fun, everyone. And we will see you again soon. Thank you for watching, everyone.